the best GT2 ever made. I'm sure the 992 will change, but the reason why we're gonna show a couple different logs that we did, so for example, the stage two versus stock is gonna show us the difference in timing pull. So it's gonna pull timing on some of the individual cylinders that confirms any kind of mechanical blow by, like for instance, scuffing on the cylinders. We can see it with data, just data logging. So keep in mind that two degrees, two and a half degrees of timing retardation consistent throughout the whole power band on a pull, you can lose as much as 20 horsepower, 30 horsepower, depending on how much timing it retards. So this will demonstrate stage two ROM 91 and ROM 93. And we'll see on ROM 93, we're gonna have a lot more timing pull. That's why it's important to tune these cars perfect might get some cheap gas and you might have some knock issues before we do any pulls we're gonna warm it up make sure our oil temperature and everything is where it needs to be so what we're gonna do is we're gonna warm up the oil and our engine temps to operating temps before we do a ramp run and of course we're gonna follow the speed limits we're definitely not gonna exceed the speed limits so but after we run a ramp run we'll we'll actually see back to back and we're gonna then load a stage one and see what it does compared to stage two that it had and compared to the factory. That's not good. Anytime over three degrees, I don't like seeing any of it at ramp runs. What we're doing is we're hooking up right now. We're gonna run that stage one map. You can fix a lot of that by running a better fuel. Obviously if we had 100 octane, we could solve that issue or running octane booster. And a lot of times you just bring it down, it'll be zeros. But anytime you pull time, you can pull horsepower. Um, so on the stock tune is we're gonna replicate had zero knock. I mean, yes, it's lower power, but it's better to have lower power than you're slowly damaging your engine. And some will argue, well, a little bit of knock is fine. Well, not in my book. For me, it's never fine. I don't want any knock at all. We have factory software loaded into this GT2 RS right now. We're gonna replicate what we were having issues with, with a tune. So here at our computer, this is our Porsche factory computer. We have engine speed load, engine load, and we have our fuel trims. This is all our timing. So this is gonna pull timing. If we have any issues, we're gonna record this. Uh, we're not going to use the data logger that we used prior because that's for uh, aftermarket software. So this is going to tell us exactly what's going on when we drive it. Just by downgrading the tune itself, we were able to have 91 stage two pretty much solve most of the issues that it was having. I didn't like that almost four degree timing retardation on it. That's just something that I don't like seeing. So the bottom line is when you get your tune, make sure your data log, make sure your tuner that you're using can provide that service. And so you know if your car is running a little bit too lean and it may have some noise on some of the cylinders because if you're having knock, you're just gonna lose horsepower anyways and you're gonna wear your engine out faster. So this is why if you tune it properly and you run the proper fuel, you will not damage your engine and cause unnecessary wear, which you're already gonna have due to more pressure. The more pressure you have, the more heat you have generated and the more wear you'll incur. So, so we have our GT2 RS on the lift. Now the fun part, we're gonna confirm the cylinder potential problems that we experience with data logging. Definitely got some scuffing here. And if we look, it's always in the pattern where the injector spray is gonna be, right in this area. 
Yeah, that's the biggest one we got on this engine, the Solar 6. Cylinder number two, you can see scuffing here. Again, this is under 10,000 miles. If we look here, we have our top section. You can see the pattern of the fuel spray, fuel wash, oil burning off. Here's one at right around 10 o'clock. So this concludes all our testing for this GT2 RS. Now, if you didn't know, now you do know that data logging is very important and you can actually diagnose your vehicle if you use the correct shop that can properly read data and interpret and find out the root of the cause before things get worse, before the cylinders fully score up where the vehicle will actually require a full-blown rebuild. Now, that doesn't mean this car will eventually not require it. They will eventually wear out because the coatings that are used in the GT2 on the cylinders are the same ones that are used in the 991.1 turbo and the rest of the lineup. Now, they have went to the PTWA coatings like on the GT3 RS and a couple of the other lineups on the 991.2 but not all, of course, are like that. So because we work on a lot of turbo cars, so we could confirm the 991.2 GT2, the engines are very similar, slightly modified. It's got a little bit better oil system in it, but basically very similar engine. And this is why the cylinder liners are the same. They're basically carried over from the 991.1. .1. And it's confusing to a lot because PTWA is supposed to be in the 991.2, Variant and unfortunately on the GT2, they just pretty much decided to go with the turbo. Now you will never find this info online. You could search, but you will not find that the iron coatings are excluded on the GT2. So yeah, six hundred thousand dollar car potentially will have a lot of issues down the road, especially the guys that keep these as garage queens and never drive them. That is the most susceptible cars. This red GT3 RS 991.2, now this is gonna have the PTWA iron coatings, which are plasma. Now this will show you exactly what I was referring to, the iron rusting that's happening. This is a car that pretty much idles a lot, sits a lot. So that's another issue with the plasma coating is the rust problems. You see that's at six o'clock right here, that white, that's rust. And by the deep honing marks, you can tell that this is a plasma coating. I hope this video was helpful, and again, I want to thank everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.